today. Uh, my name is Rudy. I'm the sales consultant here for Equidam and specializing in the fire protection tank for Equidam. And this is my co-host today, Billy, Mr. Billy Pollum. Would you like to introduce yourself, Billy? Rudy, thanks a lot. Yeah, my name is Billy Pollum. Like Rudy said, thanks for the nice introduction. I'm also one of the sales consultants here at Equidam. Um, I'm actually specializing in all the fields, so I'm just here today to assist Rudy and to make your viewing the utmost pleasure. Really, please, can you take us through? Sure. So basically, to explain to you guys, uh, Aqua Live is a new concept for us. Uh, we are basically going to up our game when it comes to doing a weekly webinar and making it a bit of a nice platform for everybody to get involved in the, in the industry of tanks and water storage and that kind of world. And um, yeah, so please bear with us. We've really like a revamped. We've our little studio here and everything. So if there's any technical glitches throughout this uh, this broadcast or the stream, uh, yeah, please just bear with us with regards to that. Yes, really thanks. I would also just like to mention that we are streaming on three platforms today. This is the first for us, and I believe there's not many like this. We stream on Zoom, as well as Facebook Live, as well as YouTube Live. So we will promote this. This is the first time that, that we're opening it, so hopefully everything goes as smooth as possible. We have done a lot of trials and trials and tests this week to get it all done. So let's go ahead. <laughs> awesome. All right, so what we're going to do today, guys, um, I'm going to do a short presentation for you on the fire tank, all the ins and outs of Aquadam's uh, brilliant fire tank product. And that will be about 10 to 15 minutes long. After that, we're going to have a bit of a back and forth between the audience, some time for you guys to share your thoughts and any questions you might have. And yeah, any thoughts that you might have on this fire tank, we'd really appreciate your feedback. And I think this is the platform now where you're going to get direct information um, from us. All right, so Billy, I think let's not delay, let's start the show and then I can get, carry on with the presentation. You're good to go, guys. Thanks a lot and do enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay, so here we are, the fire tank by Equidam, and we, that's what the presentation is going to be about today. A little bit more of Equidam. Uh, who is Equidam? The company was established in 1992. It is known for its innovation, and I'm sure you all are going to see a little bit more of these innovations today. We have a modern approach to business. I think this um, Aqualive Expo is also testament to that fact. And the company op operates with uh, a real level of integrity. And all of us here at Aquadam, we believe in our mission, and that is to help you save water for future generations. Some of the basics on the fire tank by Aquadam. The application is suitable for sprinkler and hydrant storage. It's built to the highest local and international standards. 
Some of the innovations we're going to look at today is the POSMAC steel shell and no PVC liner needed for this tank. And just like Equidem in general, in the design of this tank, we put quality and safety first. Look at some of the awesome features that this tank can deliver. There are five basic subjects that we're going to cover today. Firstly, the uh, shell of the tank, the POSMAC steel shell, and a little bit more information on that. The roll forming process that the tank is got, undergoes or goes through. The lifespan of the tank. The uh, design specifications of the tank. And finally, the delivery and installation that Aquadam can offer. So yeah, a little bit more on the on the tank itself. We do offer some additionals. Um, I think which which will, is usually quite standard, but Aquadam can offer a steel dome roof for the tank. It's a 0.55 millimeter full hard zinc aluminum corrugated sheeting built to withstand wind speeds of up to 100 kilometers an hour, complete with heavy duty lockable access hatch and ventilator to prevent condensation. Internal and external ladders for easy access. The external cat ladder is designed to the highest safety spec. Mm -hmm. so Ruby, I would just like to ask you a question there. I see that you sure. say that you got that we do external ladders for easy access and safety. Tell me, is a safety cage does it come standard with the external ladders? Yeah, that is standard. And I mean, the, the ladder is designed for um, applications that we have used it on mines and so on, where there is quite heavy um, safety spec and it is acceptable for, for those kind of situations. Oh, thank you. Excellent. All right, so moving on. Uh, the tank is designed to what we call modular flexibility. We recommend stacking. The bolted nature of the tank makes building a breeze when compared to welded fire tanks or concrete structures. Engineered design will accommodate secure tank storage for critical environmental conditions such as high wind speeds, snow or seismic loads. It's flat packed and easily transportable. It reduces shipping weight. The firmness of shape and mechanical strength are guaranteed. And these modular system panels are bolted together with a SMX modified polymer which is basically a fancy way of saying a very strong adhesive. So as promised, we're going to talk a little bit more about POSMAC, which is the actual shell of the tank. And I'm sure everybody here will agree, when it comes to your tank shell, only the best quality steel will do. So if you look here at POSMAC, some of the interesting facts around it uh, You've got a nice little diagram here at the bottom of the screen. This is the raw steel, and then it's got it's covered by a zinc, magnesium, and aluminium alloy. And when this alloy is cut, or when the steel is cut, this alloy will actually form a layer which is called cementolite. And that is what prevents the corrosion of the tank. It's really quite, uh, quite a remarkable product. So anywhere where it might be cut or uh, or it might be damaged or get a chip in or anything like that, that cementolite layer will form. And that is highly anti-corrosive. May I please ask you with the with the, the POSMAC sheet, the POSMAC coating that you are going to take us through now, yeah. is this a better material than what you used to get with the galvanized material in previous years and previous industries? Yeah, this is the very latest steel technology that we use for our tanks and um, it is definitely uh, the, the latest solution and a really revolutionary solution, uh, I think. I'm, I'm a big fan of this POSMAC steel product myself. Okay. Thank you. So moving on, it gives you the highest corrosion resistance available at this time. It is the latest recognized code of practice in the industry. It's steel that is five to 10 times more resistant than standard galvanized steel. And it means you get a tank with a design life of 50 years. So as we said, it is the highest corrosion resistant steel tank shell available. That is POSMAC. So POSMAC shows five to 10 times the corrosion resistance compared to standard galvanized and galvalume 
on flat sheet surf surfaces. And if we look here, the test method that they used was the salt spray test method. Um, looking at the POSMAC shell here on this, on, on this diagram, uh, using this salt spray test method, um, you've got your POSMAC on the right here, uh, 200 gram per square meter and 350 gram per square meter, and you've got galvalume and standard galvanized. Now, over 480 hours, there's a difference. Look at the difference in the corrosion in this, using this salt spray test method. Now, down at the bottom here, you've got 2,400 hours, which is 100 days. And just look at the difference between the corrosion under intense salt spray uh, of POSMAC versus galvalume and standard galvanized. I think it's really quite remarkable. So it means that you're going to buy a tank with a shell that is really designed to last 50 years plus. It also then does not require any PVC liner, and I'll get a little bit more into that later on exactly how we achieve that. Really, sorry, um, I just want to ask, um, are you sure, um, are you 100% sure, see there's no PVC liner at all? I'm sure, Billy, 100% sure that it doesn't need a PVC liner, and I'm going to show you exactly how we achieve that a little bit later in the uh, presentation. Can't wait to see. All right, so let's move on now. A little bit more on the roll forming process and the design that the uh, tanks are designed to. We have the machinery to design over 600 different sizes. You send us the specs and we will design the tank according to your requirement. We do diameters from 2.99 meters to 19.45 meters in diameter and heights from 2.1 to 9.4 meters high. When it comes to the roll forming process and the uh, manufacturing process, we really take great pride in manufacturing each tank perfectly according to spec. We have a dedicated team of office and factory personnel who make it their duty to deliver your tank in the shortest possible time. Um, this, this video on the right bottom here, um, that's actually from one of our videos on YouTube. And if you guys would like to meet uh, some of the staff who deliver the manufacturing and know a little bit more about Equidam itself, I would really encourage everybody to check out that video and look at our YouTube page. I think it's really, um, we've got some good information there. So yeah, we really work hard to give our customers peace of mind that they've made the right choice. Equidam uses the best machinery to roll form every tank perfectly. When it comes to the design life of your tank, your tank is designed to uh, last over 50 years. It carries a 20 year pro rata warranty and it is industry leading in both design and warranty. Some of the design specifications. Uh, the tank is designed according to the American Waterworks Association, the standard for factory bolted steel tanks for water storage. Uh, basis of structural design and actions for buildings and industrial structures, that's SANS. SANS edition 5.1 bending dimensions and scheduling of steel reinforcement for concrete. And as we've mentioned, the POSMAC steel shell, which is a magnesium, zinc and aluminium alloy coating that acts differently to iron when exposed to the elements and any harsh conditions that these tanks could possibly face. I would just like to ask you, sorry to interrupt you, uh, this is in the highest standards, international standards, so no South African organization or governing body has got any jurisdiction over the design of our tanks. That's correct. It is designed according to uh, uh, international standards, it is acceptable, we do uh, export our tanks as well. and. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if, if this, this standard is totally acceptable under any uh, condition and it has been tested, as I've shown, I think, under the, the harshest of conditions as well, so, yeah. Thank you, so just, just to highlight the question again, there's no governing body that's got jurisdiction over the design of our tank in the fire industry. I would say you're 100% correct in that, Billy. Thank you very much, sir. I think you, you've got, you've hit the nail on the head with that one. Right, moving on. Uh, 
When it comes to delivery and installation, Equidem uh, has installed in these countries around Africa, just for an example, among many, many other countries around the world. Uh, there's the locations, the actual locations or the nearest town, I would say, to where we have installed our tanks. And again, that's just around Africa. We have installed right around the world as well. So we do offer local and international delivery. The tanks are manufactured on demand and to specification. Tanks are installed by the experts, that will be us. Professional and reactive support offered by Aquadam. And we've installed over 8,400 tanks worldwide. Oh, sorry about that, I just went a bit fast there. Okay, moving on. Um, when it comes to the actual installation of the tank, you here we've got a very nice diagram which shows how this tank is put together. We've got the POSMEX uh, sheet here, so it is the tank plates as well as the stiffness are made from the POSMEX material. The tank is then bolted together and the inside of the tank is um, waterproof using an eco-friendly pure, pure acrylic waterproof coating which is adhesion promoted, UV stable, flexible and extremely durable. Our waterproof coating is easy to apply and ideal for most waterproofing applications. And the, an important thing to note here is that we do four to five coat applications of this waterproofing on the inside. And then between the sheets of the tank, the bolted sheets of the tank, we will then seal it using a SMX modified polymer, a, a very high strength sealant. And here we've got the specs of that actual sealant that we use. These specs, by the way, guys, are all available for anybody who might want to be interested to receive them. We will forward it to you guys. You should just ask for it, please. Just to ask you again, are you sure? Up until this point, still there's no PVC liner inside this tank. So as you can see, Billy, there is literally no PVC liner needed for this tank. It's a waterproofing process. The tank has a design life of 50 years plus. And yeah, I think as you can see here, there is literally no PVC liner needed for this tank. And this is the, uh, I think the construction process makes it a bit clearer for everybody exactly how we achieve that. So moving on here, <coughs> the actual anchoring the fire tank to the floor, to the what we call the fire tank floor, um, just to let you guys know, we have also designed a fire tank floor, which is up to standard for this tank itself. Um, the, you can do the floor yourself, or, and we will send you the specifications for that floor, or Aquadam can install the tank, the floor for you. Uh, the tank is anchored to the floor using these little anchors here that we have designed. It is an M24 bolt. Um, so sparing you no, taking no chances with the actual uh, materials that are used to install this tank. And as you can see here, the POSMEX sheet will be placed inside the fire tank floor in a little groove there. And that is also sealed. Okay, so there is, there is no um, danger of any leaks with this tank. It is sealed and sealed and sealed again, basically. And this is how we put the whole thing together. So, Rudy, if I didn't understand correctly, where you seal the tank all the way on the inside, that is, but it actually replaces the liner as well, where you seal the sheets with the bolt, with a bolted sheet by sheet, that the sealant that you used it in actually replaces the PVC liner. That's, that's the whole idea. And I think that is the beauty of this tank is it's a, an easier installation, it's a new concept, and it's going to work fantastically. I think it's going to change the game, basically, if we look at this, this design. So yes, Billy, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, the fire tank has a lot of different applications. Uh, it, it is really designed for the, uh, the fire protection industry itself, it's, that's, that's the main idea behind this design, but it can really be used for multiple different applications in the agriculture industry, for aquaculture, chemical storage, domestic and rural water storage, emergency relief tanks, industrial and mining sectors, loose storage tanks for salt and sand, uh, potable water storage for drinking water, 
and also recycling grey water in industrial and mining sectors. So really endless applications for this tank. I think we can just let our imaginations go and think about all the possibilities that this tank can be used for. All right, so moving on there. So really at the end of the day, Aquadam has got the tools. We have acquired the most technologically advanced graph forming equipment and bending machinery to form and bend each steel coated tank exactly to your specific needs and specifications. This right here is one of our newly acquired CNC cutting machines to cut every plate, uh, you know, meticulously exactly to spec. And there's very little room for error when it comes to our manufacturing process. We've got the certified experience. Every tank is built by the very best experienced and passionate teams, as if it were their own. Installation teams are trained and certified to give you the most memorable and pain-free experience during every installation process. And great support. We have a great team of professional office and factory personnel who make it their duty to support each customer with their specific water storage needs and in the shortest possible time. And I would also like to add on that one there, where you said we've got the tools, meaning where we do our cutting in the factory, we also do the, we prefer doing the cutting of the artwork, the nozzle sizes in the factory as well, so that we have yeah. as little as possible what works on site, yeah. as well, this is mainly for safety precautions and to have each sheet cut exactly to size according to each customer's design. That's it. And, and what is great about that is when it comes to the installation process, it makes it makes it all so much faster. It basically just fit on site. It, it's like putting together a puzzle. It's great. It's, it really works well. All right, so moving on. Um, we've got... All right, so yeah, guys, that was quite a lot of information. So let's recap a little bit. Uh, the tank shell itself is designed according to the... Uh, is designed with the POSMEX steel sheets, and it is top quality in design and modular flexibility. It is built to the highest local and international standards. It is the latest in roll forming technology, which is used to manufacture the tank. We have over 600 sizes available. We do local and international delivery, supply and installation. The tank is built to last. 50-year uh, plus design life and a 20-year pro rata warranty. And all that leaves Aquadam with happy customers and successful no-sweat projects. And, yeah, and don't forget guys, that 20-year warranty, it really is industry leading that we can offer a 20-year warranty on our tanks. So this is where you can contact us. Uh, yeah, you can contact us. Uh, that's our number. Go to aquadam.co.za. By the way, we've just revamped our website as well. It really looks great. So please go and have a look at that revamped website. There is also a page there specifically for Aqua Live, the, this weekly um, stream that we're going to do, all to do with uh, different our different products in the market. And we're going to make a little bit more about the industry itself as well. So Aqua Life, check that out on our website. You can email me directly at rudy at aquadam.co.za. And we are situated in Pretoria, uh, on the eastern industrial end of Pretoria in Walkley. We are also active on LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube. And if you have any general inquiries, you can email sales at equidam.co.za. On, on these platforms, you just search for Equidam or Equidam Steel Tanks, and you'll find us there on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. So guys, please go and like our pages, Facebook, LinkedIn, as well as YouTube. Go and follow us. We are putting up a lot of information besides these Aqualife webinars which will also give you a lot of information that's good to have and good to know. Yeah, give us a like and a share there. We'll always appreciate it. So, uh, so guys, that is basically it for the presentation. Um, Bruce Lee approves, and thank you all very much for watching this presentation. I think we're going to move on now, Billy, uh, to a little bit of audience interaction.
That's really our first thing from my side. I would like to say thanks a lot for this fantastic product. I honestly believe this is going to be a game changer as well as an industry industry changer. For the entire industry, the fire industry, it's, I think it's time to move on, move forward, get some new innovation into the industry and make it big and better. Yeah, no, you're, you're 100% right. Um, we have actually got a few guys who, who said that they would uh, give a little bit of their thoughts on Equidam itself. They have worked with us in the past. I see that the vet has joined us there on, on the Zoom meeting. I wonder, the vet, would you be willing to uh, share your thoughts with us here? You just have to unmute yourself or share your camera. Hi, the vet. Hi, good morning. How are you guys? Oh, good evening. Very well yourself, man. Thanks for joining us. No, it's only a pleasure, guys. Only a pleasure. I just have uh, I just have one question uh, that I posted to Shaul um, on the media chat. Um, yeah. Are you limited to the diameter and the height as per your presentation, uh, Rudy? Um, yeah, we we are limited at this stage to those dimensions that I've given. Okay. I believe this tank goes up to 3.2 million liters currently that we can offer. Yeah, more than that, you need an ocean, eh? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think it should be enough, right? <laughs> yeah. No, guys, thanks for thanks for inviting me to this platform. Um, I did speak to. Uh, Villa yesterday and just uh, expressed my gratitude towards uh, the Aquadam team. I think you guys are doing a great, uh, a great job in the industry. Um, you know, they always say that, uh, you know, if, you, if you're persistent enough, you'll get through. So I want to just congratulate you guys for, for making an effort in the industry and getting us a, a product, uh, you know, competitive product uh, out there. Um, currently, you guys are doing it uh, as a project manager for FireSec. Uh, you guys are doing a, a tank for us at uh, the Hill Fox project in Rudderport. And um, I just want to say thanks to you guys as well. Uh, Vainant is your project manager there and he's, he's really a good guy. And um, I really appreciate him phoning, uh, you know, all the time and giving us updates and just, you know, anything that goes wrong on site is always there to just give us an update. So uh, just to let you guys know, you've got a winning team uh, that you're busy, busy creating there. Uh, Wonderful. Thanks. I, Billy, I said that on this forum, I would like to just, uh, you know, as somebody that's not being too long in the industry, but I think 12 years counts a lot. Um, I know some, some, some of the members here today might be on the forum uh, a little bit longer in the industry, but somebody uh, being young enough and also having to go through a company called Fire Design House, we've done some research and development ourselves. And I really do understand the effort uh, that goes into a company that does research and development on a new product. And I also understand the challenges around that, uh, implementing it in, in, into the market and the challenges that goes around that. Uh, we tried to implement the TSS system into the market, which was a, which was a great deal. But uh, I also understand that you know, we need to start opening up these forums so we can discuss the challenges in and around the thinking of people's, uh, you know, the, the thinking of the industry at large. So the reason why I'm excited about this tank is, uh, firstly, you know, if we look at the old conventional way of building tanks, you know, it's time-consuming. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's always uh, a challenge on site when you. You mentioned uh, just before you ended your presentation, you, you mentioned that, well, I think it was Vili that mentioned, uh, you know, you, you guys got the tools, so you want to minimize on your hot work permits on site. And I think that's a great selling point uh, because at the end of the day, we realize now that we have challenges on each side with regards to safety and, you know, always trying to get the, the, the safety file in order for the tank to be erected. And then you've got a cut in that needs to, or a break in that needs to be done. And then you have a big challenge with regards to that as well. I've done several projects uh, to my uh, to my irritants. Uh, you know, you really get irritated when you try and 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 weld the tank on site. And there's a safety officer that tries and stops you because, you know, your scaffolding is not right, or this is not right, or your welding machine is not right, and you know. I, my, my biggest project that I have done was the BlackRock project. Uh, I, did a, I did a tank 
the Gloria project for Itera Link Fire. Um, in 2016, 2015, 2016, we did a, a tank there at BlackRock. Um, I won't go into too much detail, uh, but at the end of the day, we we really uh, we restructured and refabricated the, those welded tanks about three times uh, because of welding issues. Uh, you know, welding inspections that had to be done, painting issues, uh, you know, all of these things. And, you know, these are the kind of challenges that you get on a site. Um, it's not always something that you can, uh, you know, foresee beforehand, but it's it's one of those things that a project without challenges can never be called a project. And so the reason why I, I said to Vili, you know, I'll, I'll be behind you guys, uh, you know, throughout this process and help where we can is I also think that, you know, maybe the newer generation should rather uh, stand together and see what challenges we have in the industry and see where we can help one another rather than try and form this, you know, uh, let's, let's, let's break another's, another's companies down and, 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 and try and, 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 and not help one another with the challenges we have on sites. And uh, so, you know, for me, for me, it's all about, as a project manager, it's all about time. Uh, you know, <laughs> being funny, consistent. Funny. Yeah, you know, being consistent, uh, you know, throughout and also realizing that you don't have to do any of this in-house. In other words, you don't have to employ a welder to be able to weld your tanks, uh, you know, and and have that, have that uh, cash flow output from a company's perspective, uh, you know, if you employ Aquadam, you know, you guys have done great work for us. Um, I, I think if you guys go into the fire industry, uh, we should support you in that. Um, obviously, there, there's going to be challenges, uh, believe it or not. I think, I think if you guys are honest with everybody on this board, uh, and we're honest with you, we know there's going to be challenges. But those challenges can only be met by, by projects going forward. And, and as I said, uh, for me, it's all about time. We all, everybody on this forum knows the, the conventional way of building tanks. And that is that uh, you, you do obviously do your design, then you do your civils and you wait about 14 days for your civils to dry. And then you, f and then you throw your, your bitumen layer and you wait for that to dry. And then you roll your plates and your plates are not rolled correctly and you need to resend them and it's trucks and it's, it's you know, it's just a, guys, I, I'm super excited about this product, um, just by the way, um, just because of the experience that I've had uh, with cylindrical welding tanks. And, um, you know, I've, I, I think that the, the, the market is ready for this. I think that uh, everything is, uh, you know, everything is changing. The times are changing. I think tank sizes are changing. I think, uh, you know, sprinkler systems are changing. I think that, you know, uh, sooner or later we will we'll be, we'll be going, uh, you know, ultra high pressure and fog systems rather than the old conventional sprinklers. And your tanks are certainly number one on my list. And I will definitely uh, recommend it to any of my clients going forward. Um, and I, I wish you guys all the best. And uh, as somebody, uh, you know, once said that we all uh, let each one teach one till all are taught. And I think that's what you guys are trying to do. You're just trying to teach the industry something about, uh, you know, a, a, about their own industry in order to move forward and be more uh, flexible in the industry. And, um, you know, I really want to, I really want to uh, stress that I, I, I really want to congratulate you guys on what you've been doing, uh, because I know from, 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 as a person, I know what research and development cost, and I know the efforts that go into that. So uh, if you guys need any, any help with anything, uh, you've got my number, uh, let me know, see how we can assist. David, thank you very much for, for those kind words. And yes, I believe that we have started this platform to, to start creating awareness, not only in, in this in the, in the fire industry, but in, in the entire tank industry where there's so many nonchalant companies going around and actually ripping off customers, which, which makes the industry quite a non-believer industry. And this is why we have created this platform to start creating awareness and 
to make Equidem to have customers believe again in in people, in companies, and and in projects. So, uh, the if you've got any suggestions that that we can do and in the fire industry, and you would like to come to us to invite a couple of people to our Aqua Live Streaming Expo, you you contact me. We make a date. We go see the people. We send out the, the invites, and we start interacting in, in the industry between us, between the insurance companies and everybody else, so that we can create this awareness and, and have this movement going on and going forward and at the actual very, very fast rate so that we can get this up and running as soon as possible. But thank you again for your kind words. No, perfect. If I, if I can, Vili, I just have one question um, with regards to, this, to, the, to the structure of the, of the flooring. Um, so if, if, you, if, you throw, if you throw your base and your concrete is thrown, um, is that still something that Aquadam does themselves or is that something that the, that the construction, uh, the, the main contractor can do themselves? Um, what, is the, what is the specification there from your side? Right, so the, the, the floor was actually uh, designed uh, with a tank in mind and it was designed here at Aquadam. So we will uh, do the floor as, as well, we can do it. If you prefer to use your own contractor to, to do the floor themselves, then we are more than willing to share the specification with you um, of, of that floor. Okay. Uh, I, was just, I, was just, um, I was just very tentative of the fact that you've got, it's almost like, a, uh, I don't know how deep it goes in, but that's obviously where your, where your, where your plate goes uh, past your, uh, 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 your concrete uh, level. Yeah. And I was, I, was just, I was just wondering about the perfection of that and obviously it would be much more beneficial for the client if you guys take the responsibility of that, of that uh, structure. Yeah. I would say we prefer that as well, that we would be the guys who are responsible for that. But, okay. um, but then again it's, again, it's up to the customer. We can share the exact plan for the customer as long as it's built to spec, you know, then everybody's happy. Yeah. Um, lastly, what is uh, so the same sealant that you would use on your tanks uh, joints? Is that then covered by the floor area as well? Just it's or is, it, is is that is, is your what what is your what is your sealant on on floor level to uh, for the water not to penetrate through? Um, I just didn't get that. All right, so your tank is going into that groove there, and then that is the sudol sealant is going to be used. There as well as not, I think it's a kind of grouting that they use in the in the groove itself, and then you've got your tank sheet, and then it is covered with that sedol uh, sealant, and then over that sedol sealant, you've got four to five layers of that very high strength, high, high quality industrial waterproofing that we'll use over that again as well. So really, the chances of any kind of leaks or anything there is very minimal. So the so the floor area and the sides are being covered by this by the same application. Then. Um, not the waterproofing, but the, the, the so you've got the your sealant. You've got your sealant that's uh, that you've got your tank bolting together, and the sealant is used there and in over that groove area. And then, but I'll send you those drawings again so you can have a look at it. And then you've got your sudol there, and then over that sudol, your floor and your your uh, shell of your tank. Is being waterproofed inside. Okay, perfect. No, thank you, guys. That's that's all from my side. I wish you the best of luck. And again, I would like to reiterate: if you need any assistance, please be in contact with us. Thanks so much, uh, the vet. It's really great to hear um, what you've said here, and um, I really, personally, myself as well. You know, I think we all we all believe in this mission. That I think the business environment is changing very quickly. And yep. as you said, you know, it's time for us all to, you know, band together and make this thing happen for everybody, you know, and, and that's, that's how we see it as well. So I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks a bit. And um, just, is there anybody else on the, in the meeting? Maybe this, is there maybe something you would like to ask or add? Anybody else got some questions for Rudy? Myself? Sure, do we have any questions in the chat there? Yes, good day everybody. There is a question on the chat, to be honest. Let me just go through that. There is a question that says, this was from 
there's three that says with no liner, why, why does it not leak? Okay, so that was actually covered. Then uh, it is, is it delivered with a coating? Sorry, uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, Sean, just, yes, uh, yes. just take over again. Um, I, I see you've got a coating and a gasket, but um, um, is it delivered with that coating or is it applied on site? And who cuts the gasket to size? Is, are you referring to the gaskets where you put your nozzles or are you referring to the sealant between the tank sheets? Which one do you refer to? Uh, all of them. So the desk? All, of them. all of them. All of them. Okay, so we cut all the nozzles to size um, in our factory so that we minimize what works on site. Though then we use um, gaskets. Um, it depends on the application, but we mostly use um, rubber gaskets to seal the nozzles onto the tank there. Uh, but everything gets done on site, so the entire tank is modular. All the nozzles, all the sealant, everything goes from here to site, and then on site everything gets assembled. So to answer your question, all sealants and all waterproofing goes to site, and it gets done on site. As for the POSMAC sheets itself, that is a coating process that gets done outside. We actually obtain the sheets as a complete POSMAC um, sheet. So we don't do the, the, okay. the POSMAC coating, but we have the, the ISO and, and, and everything to do the traceability of, of the sheets. Okay, with regard to that sealant, um, I saw on the spec that you showed on the screen, it appeared to be uh, a polyethylene, but you've just mentioned rubber. Rubber being for the gasket of the of the nozzles. No, the the gasket for for the nozzles is, is actually a rubber gasket that is yeah. um, a a full face rubber gasket. That is just a, a normal gasket that, that gets used in in the entire industry um, on, on all the fire tanks. We they, we can use new green gaskets, but that is usually for chemicals. Other gaskets is about cheap. You need other gaskets; it can be supplied. That's fine. I'm not really so interested in the uh, nozzle gaskets. It's the uh, sealant between uh, um, between between the sheets. So that will be a sulfurex sealant. Okay. So is that a polyethylene or is it something else? Uh, yeah, I believe it's polyethylene yeah. based. Yeah. Okay, and then the interface between the concrete floor and that slot you were talking about, um, how, does the, how do you describe that? So the tank shell that slots into the concrete floor, uh, the slot is bigger than what the tank shell thickness is. So there is space and room inside for a sealant as well as a grow. So when that is then flush with the actual sheet um, sacks into the concrete base, it gets sealed there and full there. And once that is done and dried, there will be like a fillet sealant inside again of the tank. And over that fillet sealant, there will be a waterproofing on the concrete floor, on that filler, as well as on the, on the tank sheet. All right, but now to cast that uh, slot in the floor is quite difficult. Uh, what tolerance would you allow us? Uh, this, to, to be honest with you, um, I will not have that answer immediately, but please do pop that um, in, the, in the chat section and I will make sure that we get that information through to you as soon as possible regarding the, the tolerance on the sealant. We, I will have to get the specific answer from the supplier. Okay, all right. And then the last question is the uh, um, the holding down bolts. Uh, can they be chem sets or uh, do you prefer cast in bolts? Chem sets or cast in bolts? Bolts. The bolts, yeah. The, 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 so, what we do is the, the bolt goes into the tank. Rudy will, will just show us again. So, it is not a chemical anchor bolt, if, if, I'm, if I'm mistaken, but it does have. I, I I just need to give this one here. So it is a so just to answer your question on the on the filler in, inside where the tank shell is, we use a CSF 40 sudal. That is the sealant, 
and we use a flow graft sealant. The okay. bolt is the bolt is a M24 bolt um, that is locked into place. Yes, so uh, it does not. I, I don't think it is a chemical anchor, but it is a bolt mm -hmm. in that we yeah. actually fit the tank on the outside. So it is a uh, M24 by 300 mm, threaded rod, basically, that's going to be put in, into place to anchor the tank. Well, that's a chem set or a yeah. resin anchor. Yeah, it is exactly. Okay, so the biggest challenge to selling this to my clients is that slot. Why would you say that this? Uh, because that would fall into their um, responsibility and uh, it's getting that accurate that's the biggest challenge. Okay. Uh, we do have um, stiffness as well as wind girders, so we do the entire thing the entire tank is engineer designed, so everything is done according to, to, to specifications. The slot, the concrete floor, everything is done. So it's it, it's not anything that that we think it, it, it might it, it might work. It, it has been tried and tested before we actually launched the fire oh, tank. So I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. It, I'm, not, uh, I'm not questioning your uh, product yes. in any way. That is that is also why why we do the installation, and that's why we can give the customer. I twenty eight pro route or warranty. Then thank you for that. Well, let's thank the question. Thanks, uh, Des. Questions. Uh, any any other questions? I think that's anything else. Really, yeah. may, may you please allow me to ask you a couple of questions that that, that might have been that's on somebody's mind but but not actually asked. All right, let's do it. And so. <laughs> The actual installation of the team uh, of the of the tank um, can it be done by anybody else, or does it have to be done by Aquadam's team? Uh, the installation is done by Aquadam, and I think it's for the reasons that we have mentioned now, Billy. Uh, getting the tank installation right that's going to be very important to us. So yeah, we would prefer definitely that Aquadam does the installation on these tanks. Fantastic. Then thanks a lot. Then we also spoke about the connections and, and the nozzles on the tank. Uh, the vortex inhibitor is a standard practice in the in the industry. Can a vortex inhibitor be installed onto the fire tank? Absolutely, you can. You've got a, it can, and according to the spec, you guys send us the specs, and we can install a vortex inhibitor according to the specifications that you require. So if everything can be done according to the rational design. What has been or what what will be given to us to do the inquiry as well as the installation on site. That's hundred percent right. Fantastic. And also just one more question I have for you is, um, can you install the fire tank without a roof? You can install the fire tank without a roof. Um, I don't think it's advisable. I think the roof is going to add to, um, well, not really structural integrity, but the roof is a safety aspect to it. And so I would say, yes, you can install it without a roof, but I would I would prefer to have a roof on. Okay, sure. But then uh, I just want to go to a couple of questions and really thanks for that. I'm going to go to a couple of questions that, that we had in, in the chat here. Um, okay, so we have answered this question. There's just one more question that, that he has. Um, design for slurry liquids, only 1.3 1, 1. to 1.5. This to answer your question, the fire tank is, we can design the fire tank according to what your SGs and liquids are. Uh, you must just give us that information so that we can do the design accordingly if we have to do other um, sealants or whatever the case might be. So anything is possible that you need. And then okay. the, uh, this, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just thanking you for that. Excellent. Thanks, Des. And then there's, it, it's not actually a question, but let me just please run through it. I actually want to say thank you to Laura. Laura said thank you for the interesting info. Wishing you great results in the fire industry. As a sprinkler supplier, I will make our customers aware of your product if they have not already made contact. Rona, thanks a lot for that. We do appreciate it. I see you, you are no longer live with us, but we do appreciate it. Thanks, Laura. And then the vet has asked here, will it be supplied in with the, by internal ladder? Um, the vet 
it's usually standard practice that a ladder comes standard on a fire tank. Should your design not require for it, it can be left out. So it is completely your choice according to your design or to the fire engineer who, who designs the whole rationale who will, who will be, but usually it, it is needed. But so yes, it can be supplied with an internal liner, ladder. Not a liner. Not a liner. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Is there any other questions? Cam, thanks a lot um, for putting on your, your video. We, we do appreciate your time and effort. Cam, is there any questions from your side or concerns or something you would like to know? Um, yeah, um, so you said it's um, set aquaculture on the thing, the hatchery. Hmm. Um, so I just want to know, is the, plas is the fireproofing plastic safe for the aquaculture industry, um, does it let off any chemicals, anything like that? Um, yeah. So when it comes to that, I think then we will use uh, a, a, we might need to use a different sealant or because there are different options available with yeah. regards to that. So um, I think that's a great question and we will definitely look at that, especially for aquaculture guys. Okay, thank you. Great stuff. Thanks. Thanks for the question, Cam. That's something that we'll definitely look into as well. And, yeah. and maybe if you uh, send me your info, then I will be able to respond to you on that one. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Great stuff. Thanks, Cam. Is there any, any other questions from anybody else? Any concerns? Anything you would like to share with us? Sorry, Vili. Um, I just have another question. It's based on, on what uh, Cam just said now. Uh, most of us understand the challenges that we sometimes have on a site where, uh, you know, the client is asking you, if we increase the tank's capacity, uh, will we be able to uh, draw domestic water from there? Now, we all know that some of the, some of the bylaws of Twani and Johannesburg does not allow for it, and some do. Um, I just want to find out, do you change the, the liner inside uh, well, not the liner. Do you change the the actual application of the of the waterproofing uh, when it becomes um, both a fire tank and a and a domestic uh, supply? That is actually uh, I want to take that question in in two parts. Um, sure. The sealant that we use is safe for human consumption. Um, it is a proven and a tested and proven product, so uh, that one is, is perfectly safe for human consumption. To, to add on that, um, I know some of the five chiefs, they are full of stories when it comes to splitting tanks in dedicating fire as well as dedicating for whatever human consumption or for the buildings or whatever. So what we have done in a couple of projects in the past, if there's just simply no space for two tanks on site, we take one single circular tank and we put dividers not a physical divider inside the tank, but we actually put the nozzles on, on different heights to dedicate your fire water against your, your domestic water. So then your domestic outlet will be a little bit higher, so you can only use that much domestic, and then your dedicated fire will, water will be um, allowed for at the vortex, which you can only use for fire, it cannot be used for domestic. So that can also be done if there is a problem on site with um, space or whatever the case might be as well as we, we can do um, hydrant tanks, as well as sprinkler tanks. So it all depends on the application and the design. Cool. Great, thanks, Des. Any other questions? Yeah, over to you, Rudy. All right, so um, I think we might have reached the end of the questions on that here. I don't see any more on the chat there. Um, guys, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to join us today. We really appreciate it. We are going to be doing this uh, Aqualive Expo once a week. We'll be covering uh, all different kind of products that we can offer and uh, different tanks that we do offer. So I think, you know, so different areas of the, in, of the industry that we're involved in will be covered as the weeks go on. Uh, next week, we're going to be uh, launching the Aqualive Expo for the Agri-Dome. So come and join us for that. Uh, Shaw will be the host of that one, our co-host there in the chat today. And the Agri-Dome is another really great product. I think it's also going to be a game changer in the um, shelter and, 
and industrial areas where you, where you require uh, any kind of shelter, storage, and that kind of thing. And that's something completely different. It's got nothing to do with tanks or, or liquid storage. And I think it's going to be a real game changer as well. So we want to get that one off the ground as soon as possible and, and let everybody know about that. So yeah, from my side, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I just can't thank you guys enough for taking the time to join us today. And yeah, that's it from me. Billy, would like to say something? Yeah, again, I would also like to thank everybody coming, joining us, taking time out of everybody's busy schedule. Cam, it looks like you're also a guy that is quite involved in aquaculture. Thanks for your question. So next week will be about the Agri Dome, as what really just said. It's a dome shelter, so for all applications as well. So Shaul will be doing that. And I would also like to say thank you to our entire sales team in the company who's, who's, who's made the change with us and making today possible. Shaul on the outside doing all the questions. Um, Shaul is also not doing Zoom only for us today, but he's also handling YouTube. And we have Cindy as well, who's handling Facebook Live for us. We will not know after this Zoom meeting how Facebook and uh, everything at YouTube went, but I believe everything will be good. So please book this Zoom invitation that, that you receive. This is this is Equidam's Zoom room. We have the same meeting ID every single week on a Thursday, 3 p.m. And invite your friends, your colleagues, um, people in your industry. Um, join our Facebook page, go and like it. We have every week we have the different product that we are putting on there, as well as on YouTube, LinkedIn as well. Go and like us and you can you can follow every week that we are what, what we're doing, making awareness on all type of industry and all the products that we do and just make the industry good and great again. That's it. So thank you all very much. I think that we're gonna call it a day. And uh, yeah, again, once again, thank you all for joining us. And then uh, we will see you again at 3 p.m. next week, Thursday. We'll see you then. Cheers. Bye, everybody.